Hi, I'm Alex Williams here live at the Strata Conference, here with two gentlemen from Impetus, which is a big data services company. You guys are at the right place. Absolutely. To, when I first talked with you guys, uh, it was, I think it was Tuesday, you were had your we're hiring badge. Can you show that? Just yeah. So like this has been a this has been a common thing that we've been seeing here at the conference. And so I'm wondering how how's it, how's the hiring been going? Slow. Slow, huh? Slow. Yeah, absolutely. The good talent is hard to find. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Big data analytics is such a new subject. Mm -hmm. There's very little uh, ready-made expertise in the area. So uh, we have we have uh, we've cultivated our own expertise in the last few years in uh, in our centers in India, and we're beginning to ramp up here in the U.S. And um, we're definitely committed to hiring more and more and more. So it, it might help to just outline what. Well, let, let, let me let me let me let me just get a, the roots of your sure. company, how you started, and was big data services the original focus? Actually, no. Um, and then we'll get back into the sure. hiring. Yeah, great. So, uh, Impetus Technologies is a outsourced product engineering services company. What that means is we build mission critical software and platforms for CTOs and VPs of engineering of uh, software and technology companies. Mm -hmm. Three or four years ago, so we've been in that business for about 15 years now. Okay. With large customers like Comscore, Newstar, McKesson, across industry verticals. Okay. Um, and three or four years ago in, in our Impetus Innovation Labs, we created uh, a center of excellence around big data analytics. Okay. And that caught fire with the, with the market trend, uh, converging right. with our R&D investment. What and was it that you saw three to four years ago that led you to this conclusion that you need to put some focus on big data? Let me, let me have that because, sure. uh, because we're dealing with Fortune 100 companies, um, we're aware of what their interests and concerns are. So <clears throat> we're qualified at, at most of the companies that are named here, Standard & Poor's, Comscore Networks, Newstar Networks, as one of a handful of providers but really the go-to provider on mobile platforms, on new big data projects. So they were actually coming after us, observing the work we were doing to fill in the gaps on some platforms in the marketplace. Um, and it just happened naturally that we started serving our own clients. Now, uh, there's frankly, a show like this has really been phenomenal for us because there's just lots and lots of new people that are you have established a cluster, have a fundamental understanding of it, may have picked one or another vendors, now they want to scale it and do creative things. And that's where we come in. Hmm. So it started with the research and, and the understanding of the Fortune 100 company needs, and it has gone from there. Um, and today you say that uh, you're seeing companies coming by already have established clusters. What's that next step that they're trying to take? Well, it, it's... It's often a, a, it's a fundamental IT experiment in the beginning with a, a business driver, but now they really wanna, they want to get in a room and dialogue on what the use case possibilities are. They really want to understand and use outside resources to help determine that and what's the best way to do it. So frankly, there's, as we see in the exhibit area here, there's lots of new providers in the marketplace. And we consider our, it's our job to become expert in what they do and, and lead the customer the right way. Great. <clears throat> and I'm curious if you could outline maybe four use cases that you're seeing about people that are, you know, that you're seeing in the market around Hadoop in particular. Sure. Um, I think social media analytics is definitely one that's across industry verticals. We, in fact, uh, did a nice little prototype uh, demonstration for our last major financial services customer, and that directly applies to all major uh, industries where there are four or five leading brands. Um, we, I think we've seen fraud in, uh, again, financial institutions okay. quite yeah. a bit, clearly. Um, in, in the telecom world, we've seen a lot of churn analysis, finding out why customers are, are leaving us uh, upgrading them to higher products, mm -hmm. protecting churn, and, okay. and doing cross-sell, upsell. Mm -hmm. um, and in, in, we've just seen the last, the last uh, in healthcare, of course, it's been in quite a few. Right. Um, protecting, co essentially cost reduction, and uh, in the healthcare, it's all around cost reduction, right? Network security is the other last one that we saw in the telco space. 
So there are four. So with Hadoop, do most people want to use it as, a, as backup storage? Or do they want to use it for analytics? Or do they want to integrate it with their data warehouse? Where do you see rankings there? Uh, the most simplistic place where people get in is large data storage. Right. Clearly, large data storage uh, replacement of or using that as their next generation ETL platform. Right. Um, and of course, analytics. Analytics is the classic, well-known uh, use case. Right. So storage is a, is the big one. And I imagine that the companies are coming to talk to you. They're like saying, "Okay, we've we've begun to use it as a storage environment. Now, what can we do with it?" Right. Right. They, uh, custom, uh, most of our customers are really smart. They, they're, they're definitely not looking at it as just pure storage. Uh, they, wa they want to do things with it, clearly want to monetize it uh, with, with analytics, either directly, directly running on top of Hadoop or uh, moving it into a data mart and then doing analytics on top of that. So social media, for instance, as, uh, as, a, as a need. So what, kind of, what, what would you say is the market difference between now and last year, Jerry? What, what is the, some of the things that you've really seen change? Good question. Uh, I think the maturity of the client set, they've, they've gotten to the point where they're, uh, they're into it and yet now they want to mature and they want to really do it in a robust way. They've experimented with a couple of the tool sets and now they need to go to the next, le next level they, they have budgeting potentially this year, certainly next year. Are more budgets being put into it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, okay. and they're willing to spend. One of our uh, largest clients uses the term related to Hadoop uh, as it's, it's less expensive than free. It's less expensive than free. Hadoop is less expensive than free. Right. Well, that's a pretty good deal. Well, and the point is that they're, they're dealing with terabytes of data daily. Right. And so in some of that, they need to repurpose and have a forever archive in it. Some of it, they, they do analytics and sell that material. So for them, it's a whole new opportunity. You were asking, Alex, about use cases. We have other customers that we do five nines in the telecom industry. So there's a river of number portability, a river of, uh, of enum, they call it, um, a river of data that's going through and the, and the major carriers want access to that. So this company is a supplier of interoperability services. They have access to data internet wide. So they're in a position, they're, they're sitting back saying, what do I do with this? Right? Interoperability services, what does that mean? I'm sorry. That would be number portability for landline and telephone calls. So when you, move, when you move from AT&T to Verizon, somebody's got to provision that transaction. I see. Right. So that's become a big market, I expect. Well, that's people are moving around all the time because the, tel because the carriers are always offering deals to have exactly. you switch. Right. right. Exactly. Our, our customer, we operate that provisioning capability. They've got an FCC contract at 2014, and we really run the, the internals of that operation. Hmm. So... Based upon those use cases, based upon you know how the market has changed, and based upon this eagerness <clears throat> to you know spend more money really and to, to you know extend the infrastructure, tell me about the kind of people who you're looking to hire. Um, most ideal candidates would be people who have ready-made expertise with uh, with Hadoop or major NoSQL technologies like Cassandra, um, HBase. Cassandra um, and HBase? Yeah, Hadoop, Cassandra, HBase, Hive, that whole ecosystem, as well as uh, experience with MPP databases like Greenplum and So there's Master really and there's three levels, three tiers that uh, people are only here in smattering. So we've got three search people that are, are scouring the floor, if you will. But uh -huh. um, at the top of the stack, we're looking for business analysts uh, that have a, a real sensitivity to... Uh, they're not data scientists, but close. We have solution architects that have a sense with, of domain expertise. Okay. And, and then below that, senior engineers. Okay. Solutions architects and engineers. Right. So da data scientists? Yeah. Uh, architects and the different types of architects I talked about. Yeah. And right. And then right. Th the first level of the engagement is going to come from people who understand the business domain. Right. And can combine it with data science. Now, there's an interesting conversation starting to bubble up and I've been hearing it from Alistair Kroll who, who brought it up initially and Alistair said that one of the things that they're starting to notice is that 
we're starting to move more toward this world where domain expertise is trumped by data. What do you think? Um, I can see some some sense in that. Uh, I, I know some some analytics guys who have applied themselves equally well in e-commerce versus healthcare versus retail. So there's clearly a layer of analytics which is vertical independent, but then when the analyst gives you some, some information like, hey, you know, this guy's buying this and that together, the domain expert really needs to come in to, to make a difference and, and to see where we can leverage that pattern into new products. Jerry, maybe I'll ask you a last question. Are there any particular vertical industries, one, where you're seeing the biggest adoption right now, and number two, what geographies around the world, what are, the, are, are there any particular countries that you're seeing that are really going for it? All right, let me do the last question okay. first. We're, we're partnering with Greenplum, we're okay. working with Oracle, and frankly, there, so there's a, a draw around the world, and there's very little support in the work that we do in Europe, for example. There will be, everybody's training for it. Um, and in Asia as well, that'll be a huge space. Our primary sweet spot is the U.S. Frankly, there's more opportunity here than we can, uh, we can even begin to address. So uh, we're focused on, back to the verticals question, I think the biggest, most immediate payback is in the financial services area, information management, network management, uh, certainly telecom, and then and healthcare would be right behind it, and I forgot media. <laughs> so media and all of those services. Uh, well, you guys have an important role. You guys have to solve the, the, the mortgage crisis. I mean, that's essentially what you guys have to do here, isn't it? Right, right. We can improve on what happened last time, I'm sure of that. <laughs> right. Well, Jerry, AB, thank you very much for taking some time to talk. You know, I'm the editor of Services Angle and really look forward to keeping in touch with you guys as you go forward. And we're always looking for interesting companies and what they're doing, so appreciate you taking the time. Fantastic, thank, thank you, you, Alex. Thank you. Great, I'm Alex Williams of SiliconANGLE. We will be right back with more from theCUBE at the Strata Conference.